Hi, Dr. Alina Kulchitsky, physical therapist, lifestyle medicine, and more. Uh, here cooking on the eve of American Thanksgiving, and I'm going to make cranberry sauce. So, I'm going to use some fresh, always organic in my kitchen. Uh, you could use frozen, of course, but fresh is nicer, um, tastes better, I think. So, first we're going to wash these and prepare some other fruit. I like mine to be a bit more like a chutney rather than a sauce, so less liquidy, more kind of chopped fruit. And you'll see what I mean as we go through it. But by all means, make it as liquidy or thick or chopped as you like. So it's your recipe. Play with it. I do experiment and have different versions. Sometimes I will use pineapple mixed in there, chopped up small, um, which adds some natural sweetness, which is nice. You don't need to sweeten at all, personally. Um, I like to use citrus. I like to use seasonal fruit, apple and pear. Today I'm going to do one with apple and pear, and for the liquid, use um, the juice of a fresh orange and a little bit of rind to give lots of good flavor. So let's start with preparing the fruit. I, like usual, I'm going to walk you through everything. So we do need to wash this. It is not pre-washed. So I'll put it in my colander or sieve. I did already scrub the fruit in advance including my orange. So make sure you scrub that orange peel. I did it with soapy water, just this soap. So, of course, there's soaps you can buy to clean fruit to get rid of pesticides a little better if you like. It's totally up to you. But um, I did make sure when washing my apple and pear to get these little wells because pesticides sit in there. I do cut that part out too, actually, for that same reason. Even on your organic fruit. Organic is not 100% pesticide free. It's about 30% less pesticide than non-organic, than conventional fruit, which is a great improvement, um, but it, yeah, only 30%, so it's not free of it. Okay, so let's get our pot. I'm gonna use a saucepan, it's about this deep. It's not a big pot but it is not the most shallow of my saucepans. It's a bit deeper. Okay, so just like so, and then I'm gonna put it on low heat. And so that's just covered on low heat to warm up while I prepare the fruit. Okay, so let's get chopping. Now, with this kind of sauce, though I like it chopped, fruit and less saucy, uh, liquidy type of consistency, I am going to chop it on the finer side. First, obviously, we have to core it. And see, there's what I'm talking about. I'm cutting out that well, because so I'm not going to eat that part. Even though it's organic, it's where the pesticides like to collect. And I don't want to eat it. We um, are finding out more and more with connection of pesticides and Parkinson's disease in industrialized countries. So we want to reduce our exposure as much as possible. Filter your water, especially if you drink well water and live on a land with well water, filter that water. Have a carbon filter system to your home. So important. And same with the pears. We're going to core it. This time of year, pears and apples are in season. So delicious. Citrus too. And so you want to use seasonal fruit, produce always. You're going to get maximal nutritional value when you eat seasonally and locally, if you can. Okay, and now we'll chop everything. And so as you noticed, it's just one per fruit. Now this is gonna make um, quite a bit of sauce for me, for a household of one. <laughs> of course, I could bring it to Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. Uh, have a Friendsgiving to go to with their family and friends. But they are a wonderful cook and they don't want me to bring anything. 
but I love this sauce and I do eat it during the season through Christmas as well and I love to eat it in various ways it's particularly good on cottage cheese or yogurt for breakfast in the morning it already has all the nice spices mixed in including cinnamon so I usually add cinnamon to my yogurt or cottage cheese in the morning but when I use this I don't have to so I basically put in a serving of either one um, cottage cheese or yogurt and put in some chopped nuts and seeds and organic of course and then put my cranberry sauce on top and it's a delicious breakfast it's also good on waffles or on pancakes if you're having a treat breakfast for the holidays it's also great um, on toast with peanut butter or cashew butter I also really love making apple crisp at this time of year and I make mine really healthy low sugar of course <laughs> and so I really enjoy having a serving of apple crisp warmed up and a little bit of Greek yogurt and my cranberry sauce on top I'll eat that like a breakfast because it's almost just really having oatmeal <laughs> the way I make my apple crisp because again I don't use much sugar and as you're going to find out today I won't use much sweetener in this recipe either okay so I'm going to take all of this chopped fruit to add to the cranberries in the saucepan my hands were washed before starting Yeah, that's going to be a lot. I'll show you in a second. Don't like to waste anything. <laughs> okay, so you need to stir that up. Let me bring you over to the stove. You can hear the cranberries popping. <laughs> Almost like popcorn popping. So we're going to stir this up. Look how pretty and festive that looks, doesn't it? Now we do want to get our spices in there right away. And I do want to talk about spices today. Now the fruit, of course, has wonderful fiber, as I mentioned, and the colorful Rainbow of fibers is always great. So look how colorful we have today with the red cranberry and then um, our paler apple and pear gives us different kinds of fiber for different kinds of good gut bacteria. So great, we have a variety of colors here. Next, let's add in some of our spices. First, let's start with cinnamon. So I have some um, homegrown cinnamon sticks which is really bark and you can see um, how it is bark look at that shape right this is from Ecuador so there's different kinds of cinnamon trees different varieties and they can appear slightly different from each other so you'll see different varieties out there but I was lucky enough to have this homegrown um, from my ex-in-laws who live in Ecuador Oh, I see a bad cranberry. Let's take that out. Okay, so I'm going to put in a few broken pieces here. How much do you put? I don't know. It's to flavor, to your taste, so it comes with experimenting. But I will put in about one piece total to start with, and then you can add more or less if that seems, you know, appropriate for your taste buds. I have some cloves from Ecuador as well, homegrown, organic. Again, lucky me. So let's take a few of those. Cloves have an interesting shape. I wouldn't overdo it with cloves. They are very potent in flavor. It looks like a little club, kind of. So we'll add those in. So I'm just putting in a few. Now with these whole spices, they need some time to, you know, like bloom the flavor out. So between the moisture from the fruit and um, the heat, 
that looms the spice to allow the flavor and contents to kind of seep into the food, giving it that flavor. And of course, they're wonderful properties for our health because spices are powerful substances from plants that are so good for our health, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Next, some nutmeg, organic. Again, you're going to do it to taste. I am going to just do a, a dash there. I think that's maybe about, I don't know, not even a quarter of a taste a teaspoon. And then some allspice. Same. Let's stir that up. And then we do need to get the juice in there of the orange so that things don't dry out and stick to the bottom. Again, I have this on low heat, so you know, two or less on your dial. You do want to stir from time to time to cook things evenly. We want to cover it too to allow that moisture to stay in there. Okay, let's get the orange. So I'm going to cut my orange in half. and squeeze the juice of half an orange. Now again, if you want this to be more liquid sauce, then you might want to use the whole orange. Now you could literally use like a juice grinder, right, for your citrus to better get all that juice out. I'm lazy <laughs> when it comes to using kitchen devices, as you will come to notice with my videos. I can tend to just do with my hands and bare utensils minimum <laughs> where possible. I don't like cleaning more than I have to. Okay, so as I said, we are going to take the zest of this orange as well. So let me get a zester. I have more than one here. <sighs> Let's use that. You could do about a tablespoon's worth. And I do smell things kind of getting hot, so let's pause and stir. That just comes from experience of cooking. So citrus we know is high in vitamin C. Um, they used to back in the days of sailors stuck at sea for long periods of time, tell them to suck on lemons to prevent scurvy, which is a disease from deficiency in vitamin C. Vitamin C is necessary to build collagen. Um, we need it for other things as well, but uh, that's a big one. So for bone health, um, connective tissue health, vitamin C is important. It helps immune function, of course. And I was listening to a podcast recently with a medical doctor for fertility, and she was explaining how vitamin C improves motility and uh, function of sperm. So for people trying to get pregnant to conceive, um, she recommends that when um, spouses are having trouble, the male partner takes supplements, including vitamin C. Interesting additional fact that I did not know prior to listening to that. Okay, now I'm actually not going to throw that out. I'm going to eat that later because I don't like to waste anything. But I think that's enough zest. So I'm going to just spoon that off. Yes, I just took a piece of cinnamon stick to help get rid of some of this zest a little better to get it onto. I don't want to waste it. Okay, let's put that aside. Now we're going to stir it well and cover it and we're not going to walk away 
we're going to keep an eye on it and keep stirring from time to time. So there is some juice in there. Let's see if you can see that. Not so much. Yeah, it's hard to show it to you. And um, there's probably about a quarter cup worth of liquid produced from the fruit cooking so far being released from the fruit, as well as the juice of that half orange that I just squeezed in here. Do you have to use the orange? No, you could just add water. But if you could have better flavor at the same time and vitamins, then why wouldn't you? Okay, so let's cover that. And let's talk about our spices a little bit. I'm going to lift you up. Okay, so let me tell you about some medicinal properties of the spices we're using today. For all spice, this is coming from this wonderful book, Healing Spices. You could also just Google, right? But this is by a doctor, PhD doctor, Baharat Agarwal, and he's quite famous for his research over the decades on spices. Yes, he's from India, but he lives in California for some time, actually. I think since the 70s. Anyways, so allspice helps with high blood pressure, so, you know, hypertension, and for menopause problems. So ladies who are over 40 could be something helpful for you. Um, you can buy allspice um, in various ways, but, you know, the most typical form is already ground for you. Let's talk about cinnamon. Cinnamon is popular. It adds natural sweetness to things, so helps to reduce the need to add any kind of sweetener. One reason I like to use it, uh, many of us know it's anti-inflammatory. So cinnamon particularly helps with, according to the book, cancer, cholesterol. It helps to reduce high cholesterol in terms of the LDL bad cholesterol and type 2 diabetes and that has been commonly researched so it helps with blood sugar control uh, particularly if it's Ceylon cinnamon. So Ceylon cinnamon is a specific variety. It is the kind that I buy pre-ground. Um, this one from Ecuador is not Ceylon. However, um, do note that that's the one in research proven to reduce risk of diabetes and help control diabetes. Um, I think you have to eat consistently daily about three teaspoons a day of Ceylon cinnamon to have that um, effect for diabetes. But don't quote me 100% because it's been a while since I looked at that data, so do look it up. Apparently it can help with food poisoning, heart disease, also with high blood pressure again, like our allspice, with insulin resistance, so with prediabetes, uh, with metabolic syndrome. So these are inflammatory conditions. So see a pattern here with it's anti-inflammatory. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS in other words, stroke, uh, triglycerides, we talked about LDLs, but also triglycerides helps, uh, ulcers, vaginal yeast infections, and for wounds. So it's antimicrobial. So lots of benefits on that list for cinnamon. And as we know, it pairs well with the other spices we're using today, commonly used also in baking in general. Now cloves are a little less commonly used in modern times. More uh, historically though, they were used quite a bit, especially for medicinal powers. And cloves do have an um, effect on, on pain, on numbing pain, in fact, especially for dental. And so you will find it in um, your pharmacy with the gels used to help um, for sore gums. That's uh, the cloves. It has a very distinct flavor, and you'll notice it in that gel. So um, I actually once, when I was growing up as a child, had a tooth problem while I was away for vacation and couldn't get to the dentist until another week before coming home. 
And so, well, this was back in the 80s, and so you didn't go to the dentist where you were locally. <laughs> you wait till you got home. And I sucked on cloves every night, and it helped with that dental pain. It nipped it in the bud. I had no pain. So I can tell you from experience, it works. Just stirring up my fruit. Okay, so what else does cloves do for you other than numb pain? It's good for bad breath, so it helps to mask bad breath. Helps um, for blood clots, so to thin the blood. It helps against cancer. Cold sores, so people who suffer from cold sores, once you have that herpes simplex 2 and you, you know, they can, it, it's in you for life and the right circumstance will make those cold sores evolve or erupt and so cold sores might be helped be combated through cloves. Um, denture problems or stomatitis, food poisoning as well, uh, genital herpes, so another type of herpes, uh, gum disease, so it helps with inflammation of the gums, so gingivitis and periodontal disease. It helps with hepatitis C, so it's antiviral. And mosquito bites, toothache as I mentioned, and ulcers. So that's quite a list as well for benefits of those spices that we're using today. And I should also mention um, what is a spice? Well, they have to, a spice has to be dried. So herbs are fresh leaves of a plant that are edible and non-edible because sometimes um, we use them for other reasons, not to consume but on skin or what have you, in salves. But um, spices are all edible and they are dried from plants. And it can be either dried bark, leaves, seeds, um, flowers, um, roots, just to name a few you know, um, places from the plant. Uh, we didn't talk about nutmeg, did we? And so those are basically spices by definition. Spices are very high in phytochemicals. So those are powerful plant compounds um, that help with inflammation and oxidative stress. So every time we have cellular reactions in our body, which is constantly, we are releasing free radicals, right? And those free radicals bounce around and cause inflammation and damage. And so phytochemicals help to bond to those free radicals and immobilize them and make them inactive. So they're anti-inflammatory, they are helping with free radicals to stabilize them and prevent their damage in our body, in our cells, and so on. Um, spices make foods taste good and you want to experiment with them. Different cultures pair different types of spices together intentionally and it's ancient knowledge that was figured out and passed on over the generations to um, not only give food their distinctive flavor for different cultures, but also to impart um, their physiological benefits and help with disease that maybe that culture experienced and suffered from historically. And so that's always interesting to look at. So nutmeg, nutmeg I looked up, helps with anxiety, uh, cancer, cholesterol problems, again, lowering the LDL cholesterol or bad cholesterol. It helps with depression and uh, helps with diarrhea. Helps with epilepsy apparently, memory loss and low sexual desire. So I guess it improves libidos. Ooh, and wrinkles. Okay, I need to have a little more nutmeg in my life <laughs> at this stage. So yeah, those are the benefits of the spices we're working with today. Interesting. Let's stir the pot. Let's let you have a look. So things are softening. And I've got it on a low heat, so that's why, you know, it takes a while. Ooh, he's still hearing the popping of the cranberries. There's enough liquid in here that, you know, if you want to speed up the process and liquefy it faster, you could turn it up a bit. So I'll do that slightly. Now, you may ask, is this going to be sweet enough? Well, 
I do have enough fruit in here that is sweet to lend sweet flavor plus the sweetness of the cinnamon that for a palate that is used to a very low sugar, not using a lot of um, sweetener in their diet, would perhaps be fine with just the way this is. Now, for the average Western person, North American especially, they probably are not going to find this palatable. They're going to feel it's too tart or too sour. So I recommend sweetening with cinnamon. I mean, sorry, we talked about cinnamon. With pure maple syrup vinegar, uh, not vinegar, <laughs> pure maple syrup. <laughs> because it is high in antioxidants, the highest of all the sweeteners, natural sweeteners. I don't recommend using artificial sweeteners at all. They cause all kinds of problems, including um, gut dysbiosis, making your brain crave and hunger food more because it ate without getting calories and it's confused and then thinks it's starving and not getting what it's supposed to. So there's all kinds of reasons why you want to avoid artificial sweeteners. And actually I was listening to another podcast recently that also was saying stevia. It's not, um, you know, the godsend everybody thought it was to replace um, sugar. And in part is because it's a lot of uh, stevias have been... Um, compromised on the market and they're throwing sweeteners in there and getting away with it on the label like putting in aspartame for example or sucralose or what have you so you want to be careful with that and maybe just avoid it monk fruit i have not read or heard anything negative yet in that regard of it being adulterated by the food industry but i'm sure just like stevia was it's coming if it's not already happened so here we have some pure organic dark maple syrup the darker the better because the more antioxidants i like to use very little so i'm going to put drizzle maybe one or two tablespoons at the most and that's it i know from doing a cooking class demonstrating how to make this a lot of people still needed to, wanted to put more when i gave them permission to you know kind of do it to their taste. Um, people were having a bit of heavy hand pouring the maple syrup, um, but it is a sweetener, so it is sugar, even though it's high in antioxidants and comes from a plant and therefore much better for us than table sugar, refined sugar, or those artificial sweeteners, um, it still is sugar. So be careful with the quantity and try to experiment with slowly making your palate prefer less sugar over time so maybe this time you use a third of a cup um, and then next time you make this recipe you make it with a little bit less and a little bit less each time you get the idea and do that with your diet in general and you will start to not like such sweet things and feel things taste pretty sweet when maybe to the average person they're not so we still have some whole cranberries in there, so it still needs to cook a little longer, but it's coming. Finding the right temperature to cook on makes all the difference. So I'm going to pause perhaps this video and then come back. But you know what? Actually, the other thing you can do is take it off the heat and just let it sit for a while. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to let this sit. I just turned the heat off. And we're going to cover that back up. And we'll let it sit for, gosh, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes and come back to it and stir some more and see how it looks. So bye for now. Okay, I'm back. So it only took maybe 10 minutes, not even, to get this to finish. And basically you want all of the cranberries to have popped. So the chunks you see are just from the apple and pear. And so I'm going to pour this into my container. And you will see the consistency. 
So notice how it does have some chunks of fruit, but it is saucy in the consistency. It's not um, as liquidy as some people maybe prefer. So again, just add more liquid and cook a little bit longer to make it more liquidy. And you could use an immersion blender. You could strain it, but I don't recommend that because then you're getting rid of all that wonderful fiber that's oh so good for you. And yeah, you got some really healthy, delicious, homemade cranberry sauce. Not just for eating on your turkey, if you eat that. Um, again, you can eat it for breakfast and meals, on your dessert, on your ice cream would be really good, not just on your yogurt or cottage cheese, on your toast with peanut butter or nut butter of choice. On your apple crisp, as I suggested. So many ways, so many options. I hope that gives you a good idea of a healthy way to make your own cranberry sauce. Um, I really don't recommend this stuff from a can because uh, it's highly processed and homemade from real food is always better, both in quality and in your health benefits. Bye for now and check out my other recipes. Thank you.